So, hi. Uh, this is the presentation. I'm very sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, I hope you will be able to see everything you're supposed to see. Uh, my name is Peter Palaga. As was said, uh, I work for Red Hat uh, at uh, uh, Red Hat Middleware. Uh, I am currently paid for uh, developing and maintaining uh, Red Hat Fuse on EAP, which is uh, distribution of Camel. Uh, we will be speaking quite a lot of Camel today. Uh, the upstream project uh, of the product is called Wi-Fi Camel. Uh, I'm there in the team for about a year and a half. Uh, before that, I uh, worked directly on JBoss EAP and Wildfly. Uh, in my free time, I work on uh, several uh, Maven uh, and build related tools, such as uh, source dependencies. Uh, it's a way how you can uh, declare dependencies in Maven and Gradle in terms of uh, source commits instead of uh, released uh, artifacts that you pull from remote repositories. Uh, except for that, I work uh, on editor config integration uh, for Maven and Gradle. Who of you knows editor config? It's a format for defining, styling rules for the source code. And it's supposed to be IDE independent, so IDEs that support it, such as uh, IntelliJ, uh, when they see the editor config file, they read the settings and adjust their internal settings based on that, such as uh, indentation and end of lines and so on. Uh, the talk is called uh, generally uh, about Java because uh, at the time when I was submitting the talk, uh, we were kind of forbidden to speak about uh, Apache Camel Kale uh, uh, in public. Now the embargo is gone, and I can speak uh, about Apache K. OK. Um, so this will be more uh, Apache Camel related than Java in general. But still, there are some important points uh, for Java uh, in general in this, uh, in this talk. So it's not that imprecise to speak of uh, one second redeployments for Java because this is basically about one way how this can be reached. Uh, so before we speak too much about Apache Camel, who of you has quite a good idea what Apache Camel is? One, two, three. OK, who of you has ever written a working uh, Apache Camel route? Right? Uh, which was not so many, so I'll give you a um, very quick introduction uh, into Apache Camel. So uh, first, it's quite an old project see, since 2007. Uh, it's also very big in terms of uh, lines of code. I think uh, it's the second by lines of code uh, on GitHub in Java. Uh, it's really, really very big. It has many Maven submodules, and it, uh, it, it's, it, it crashes uh, IDEs because of the size <laughs> very often. Um, it is an integration library. It is, it is a toolbox which allows you to uh, create these so-called routes. And what is a root? It's a way how you can transfer data from one system to another system that were not directly designed to communicate with each other. And Camel gives you tools to do exactly this. It has connectors for many different systems uh, and it gives you ways how to handle the da data, to do mappings, transformations and so on. Uh, it pay, it's based on a book called uh, Enterprise uh, Integration Patterns. Uh, the book has a web page that you can see at the bottom. Uh, so there's a quite, quite a sound uh, theory behind this, and uh, Camel is ex actually, actually an implementation of this, uh, of this concept. Uh, here are a few examples of those integration patterns. 
in total, there's like 60 of them described uh, in the book. I'm not sure if uh, KMO implements all of them, but uh, I'm quite sure the most of uh, the ones you will need in your life are there. Um, uh, there will be a short demo where I will show you some of them. Uh, here, the number of uh, components or systems you can connect out of the box with the uh, open source uh, camel. This is the complete list. Uh, in the demo, we will use uh, <coughs> Twitter and Telegram. These are protocols, file types, uh, public APIs, uh, and so on. This is just uh, <coughs> the part that is available out of the box. Except for that, uh, there exist uh, tens, maybe uh, probably not hundreds of components that are not there, mostly because of licensing uh, issues uh, that connect uh, proprietary systems. Uh, to define roots, uh, you will use domain-specific languages. Uh, there are several of them offered by the project. Uh, these are perhaps the most common. Uh, Java and XML, except for that, uh, there's also Groovy, Scala, and some other. Uh, once um, here in Java you would uh, extend a root builder and uh, override the configure method and here you will say that uh, we are pulling uh, messages from uh, from 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 uh, does it work doesn't look like uh, we will pull messages from, uh, from Twitter. Uh, we will lock every message we'll see and we will forward them to, to Telegram, to a bot that is defined somewhere in a configuration file. This is the same in XML and uh, you can do the same thing in other languages in a similar way. So now, uh, <coughs> let's look, what's the time? We have like 30 minutes, so it, this has to be very quick. So, can you read uh, the font now? I hope so, great. Uh, so this is a, this demo should show how you would uh, create a root, an application containing a root, and how you would deploy it to OpenShift uh, or Kubernetes. I will use OpenShift. Uh, the project uh, contains uh, a few dependencies such as uh, Spring Boot, uh, these are bombs that you will import so that the uh, <coughs> versions uh, are compatible with each other. Uh, there's a few uh, boot starters provided uh, by the Camel project that you import here. We will use Undertow on Spring Boot because, because we are from Red Hat and uh, we will uh, we need uh, Twitter and Telegram and a few other things. Uh, here, ha let's have a look what the, what, what the content of the application looks like. Uh, this is the entry point, point for the fat jar of the Spring Boot. Uh, it's very simple. And uh, the roots are defined, uh, as we have shown, uh, in an extension of root builder. Uh, here, we start, uh, we pull the data every this many seconds uh, from Twitter using this. We are looking for these uh, keywords. 
and uh, we lock every message we see and we do some processing of the messages and then we send it to Telegram using the recipient list uh, integration pattern. Uh, there are two routes here. The one is the forwarding route and this is just an echo route on Telegram uh, that remembers uh, Every uh, every client that connects to the to to my uh, Telegram bot, so that I can um, dispatch to all clients that are connected uh, on Telegram. So, uh, if you would like to participate on this demo, you could uh, tweet now uh, a message containing Camel and DevConf, and then if you connect to this Telegram bot, you will see the message, uh, the tweet uh, being forwarded there. So let me now deploy uh, deploy the demo to OpenShift. Git status. So I'm pushing to Minishift. Um, Minishift is a remote in this case that points at uh, at a Git repo inside uh, inside my cluster. Uh, it's Gox. Who of you knows Gox? Gox is much like GitHub. Uh, it has a nice UI and you can deploy it very easily on OpenShift. I have deployed it and I have pushed the code of my application there. Uh, I'm lazy to find the repo and show it to you, uh, whatever. Uh, except for that, uh, Jenkins was started uh, because my project contains uh, a Jenkins file. And the Jenkins file will be automatically executed uh, on OpenShift Edge, the build should be visible here. Login. <clears throat> so if everything goes nice and it fails because I haven't started uh, my mirror that takes my local Maven repository. It's a very uh, easy hack that uses uh, MRM Maven plugin for forwarding. Uh, and when I restart the build now, uh, it should succeed. Uh, it will take uh, more than a minute. I think we are not going to wait for it. We can... Uh, open the we can open the bot uh, through telegram web and we should see the messages forwarded there uh, these are from 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 yesterday i think when i tested and there should appear uh, some new or we will see the same messages that we see here because I have posted some test mes messages on Twitter there and uh, this should, uh, they should appear once again when the container starts. So um, this is basically how a traditional uh, integration with uh, Apache Camel works. Still on there. Um, uh, it uses uh, Fabricate Maven plugin to build the image. Uh, you can see the plugin configuration uh, in the POM file. It's in the OpenShift uh, profile. Uh, basically, it's a very common way to use uh, Fabricate plugin to produce uh, Docker images. And um, as I said, we use Jenkins that adds uh, like tens of seconds uh, to the build. And in the end, uh, even if we didn't use uh, Jenkins, it would take like 
more than a minute. And that's exactly where the KMOK project uh, is, is aiming. We want faster deployment. So the deployment is there and we should see some messages uh, here. They just arrived. And uh, if you post something on Twitter now, uh, it should appear here in a couple of seconds. I'll leave it open if somebody of you wants to send more. So Martin's uh, message was sent <coughs> probably even before I started the demo, but <coughs> whatever. <coughs> Uh, so, this is the traditional way, right? And uh, there are, there's a whole big new uh, area of interest uh, for, for, for Apache Cable as a project nowadays. Uh, one of them is low code or no-code uh, integrations, which are um, primarily targeted at so-called citizen developers. Citizen developers are engineers or, uh, I don't know, authority officers who are not programmers, but they are technically skilled enough to be able, using a dedicated UI, to create simple integrations to take data from one system, to transform it somehow and push it to some other system. Read files, read APIs, and so on. Uh, there's a project uh, implementing this. It's uh, Apache Synthesis. Uh, I have deployed it on, uh, on my OpenShift instance. Uh, maybe I could show you very quickly uh, how it works. <coughs> uh, it's in uh, separate space uh, I probably will have to log in so here uh, I would have to start with uh, connection I can choose from things that actually come from Apache Camo, from the tradi traditional one, and they are presented here somehow. I will be reading from Twitter, and these are exactly this, the things I uh, was defining in the Java DSL to start the pipeline, right? I have already uh, defined a connector like this, it's this one, it has the secrets uh, filled out, uh, and I have defined a uh, connection for uh, Telegram as well, and the secret is there. To create an integration, I just take these two, I will start for, from Twitter, I will uh, end with uh, the search, I would fill in the keywords, Camo and dev, dev conf cz, and I will forward it to to the bot. I need a chat ID. I will not fill it out. Uh, when I finish and click. Uh, this would create a container, dip, uh, create an image, deploy, the, uh, deploy it, and uh, we would see the same thing uh, happening here in the camel bot as we have seen with the, with the Java Spring Boot application. Uh, when I click finish, currently it would again take uh, a minute or a bit more depending on how complicated uh, your integration is. Um, and that's exactly when the Apache Came OK project uh, comes in with the ambition to make this much, much faster, right? Uh, let's go back uh, to the presentation. Well, let's have a look if somebody has posted something here. No, nobody. I will just kill the kill the pods. 
so that uh, we can do the same once again with game OK. This one. So back to the presentation. Uh, and the second area that is a motivation for this new Apache KMLK project uh, is uh, serverless. In serverless, you not only have uh, functions, as you know them uh, from uh, Amazon Lambda, but you also need some sort of glue that connects uh, various functions and external systems. And that's exactly where there's a huge match for the traditional Apache cable, but there's a requirement uh, to be able to prototype the glue, the connections, the, the routes very fast. And actually, there's also a requi uh, requirement. It's not a requirement, it's a characteristics of these two areas that the the integrations, the pipelines there are not going to be very complicated. There's just going to be very simple or no logic at all. With Spring Boot, you can bring in many Java classes, you can use dependency injection, and you can use lots of business logic there, right? And there's no such requirement here because you will not be able to, to create a complex uh, business logic through uh, Synthesis UI. And the citizen uh, integrator is not skilled enough to do this as well. And with serverless, you also want just to, just to forward data, maybe transform it somehow, but not too much complex logic. Okay? So taking these two things, uh, into account and the third one that the uh, low memory and CPU usage at uh, startup of the integration matters a lot especially if you are the one who provides this as a service because you are paying the bill for the electricity it's not just that the integrator needs a fast fee feedback but when the container starts uh, uh, fast the CPU cycles are simply not there and the RAM usage needs to be keep kept very low. So you need to look at ways how to eliminate the time one minute and how to eliminate the uh, RAM and CPU used for uh, container builds, uh, image builds and startup of the container. And that's exactly uh, where KMOK okay, uh, aims at. It's very new, couple of months. So uh, what you will see here is very, very fresh and new. Uh, so when I say it, uh, simple, what does it mean? Uh, how would I have to simpli simplify uh, this Spring Boot application so that it's uh, acceptable for Apache game okay. Uh, I will not be editing here because I think I'm a bit late. I'll just switch to another revision uh, in my history. This one and I will comment what, you, what is uh, simplified there. So I have taken Groovy but this could also be a Java file. And it, if it was a Java file I would, in the first place, have to remove uh, the package declaration because Apache Kerm Clay understands only plain Java files without package declaration. So package declaration isn't there. Second, uh, everything has to be inside this single file, which is <laughs> sometimes, or which is really stupid for some use cases, but it perhaps suits to 99% of the users of those systems that we have so like citizen integrators and uh, serverless functions uh, glue right 
So we have moved every single, single thing into a single file. We have inlined the processors. This is the one, this is the second one. The first processor is uppercasing the keywords. It was there uh, in the Spring Boot demo too, but I haven't commented on that. So if it sees camel, it makes uppercase camel out of it, and the same for DevConf sees it. And the second, this is the Telegram bot implementation that just uh, stores the chat IDs of the clients. So if any one of you now connects to the bot, this class or uh, the, the chat ID of your session would be stored uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in a global here hash set so that I can dispatch to all of you, okay? And the rest is much like it was before. We have two routes. Uh, actually, I haven't commented where this placeholder, uh, how these placeholders are replaced. In traditional camel, I had a properties file inside the Spring Boot application. With camel K, I have to create a secret. To create a secret, I have a couple of lines of code, uh, and I actually create a secret out of these uh, application properties files. And uh, what I do is, ah, where is it, here. I'll delete the old secret. I'll see project CK1 so I have deleted the old secret it was if it was there uh, I have copied the uh, applications uh, uh, properties to a temporary uh, directory I have remote comments uh, and I have added my Telegram authentication secret uh, at the end of application properties and then I have created a, an OpenShift Kubernetes secret called forwarder properties. And now uh, when I go here and when I run the root like this we should see something like a deployed which didn't work. Why? Because because the the secret is wrong perhaps. For the props the secret is correct. My count Let's have a look what the secret looks like. Um. Ah. The properties, the rest of the properties is not there. That's the problem. And why? Still here, so some of the steps didn't work. Uh, so let's try to do it one by one. We are in the right project. We deal with the secret. We copy this one. Temporary. We remove and this one. Okay. And now the secret is complete, and we should be able to deploy this using 
Ken, uh, Ken. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> uh, because it's the very same route, we should see uh, the tweets forwarded here uh, in the uh, in the Telegram bot, which just happened. And if somebody of you posts a tweet, again, it should appear here. Uh, how does this work? We have some time, so I can explain. Uh, there's a camel binary, which is just a client that speaks with the, with the cluster. You can download it from KMLK uh, releases, uh, unzip, add to your path, and it starts working. And there's a KMLK operator inside the cluster. Uh, who of you has a fairly good idea what uh, Kubernetes operators are? One. Good. <coughs> Let's explain. And this is just a very, very uh, broad uh, introduction of, uh, from a Java guy. You are on a conference where there are uh, many better talks to, do, to, to go to to learn about this. But what you need to know that it's an application management concept. What it means, management. Creating applications, removing, uh, removing applications, uh, editing, changing, modifying application. That's management, okay? It does what a human operator would do to manage uh, applications. How does it work? It works based on a declarative input, right? You tell the cluster what you want and the operator looks at the declarative de definition of the state and tries to reconcile the desired state uh, with the uh, actual state. The operator hangs on the official Kubernetes API. And there are two important things to see there. It gets notifications about changes in the model of the cluster, right? When a new resource is created, the operator uh, gets a notification. And when it gets a notification, it implements a custom logic to do something useful. For example, create some resources, delete some resources, modify some resources, scale up, scale down, look into existing applications, call their APIs, and so on. It's up to the author of an operator what the operator should do, okay? The second part is uh, custom resource definitions. So on one hand, we have built-in resources in Kubernetes such as pods, services, and so on. On the other hand, you can extend the model, the built-in model with your custom kinds of resources. And your custom kinds of resources uh, carry data that your operator needs to know uh, to do the management of your applications, okay? And the custom resources are exactly the way how to define the input for the operator declaratively. Uh, and this is what the KMLK operator is doing. The input is a GRUI file, a Java file, an XML file. The KML command line client takes the file and what it does, it creates a custom uh, resource of a type integration inside the cluster, nothing else. And the operator, the KMLK operator, is running and it gets a notification that there's a new uh, resource of kind integration. It looks into the data of that uh, integration instance. What does it contain? It contains a piece of groovy code. Ah, this means 
we need a groovy runtime to run this. So it looks into the list of available runtimes that are built in into the operator, which are, by the way, also custom uh, resources, and uh, looks for a match. Oh, OK, Groovy is supported. Let's take the Groovy runtime. And the Groovy runtime brings, uh, actually, there's a slide to it. Uh, Groovy runtimes, runtime brings a set of dependencies, actually, Maven dependencies with it. Let's take this set of dependencies as a base for an image. For, uh, for an image. Good. Uh, and then second, the operator looks into the definition file. Which, uh, which endpoints are there? In our file, there was Twitter and Telegram. So it means the operator takes more Maven dependencies and adds it to the list of dependencies that are needed to run this integration. Uh, OK, so now we have a list of dependencies. The operator looks into the set of known images. Have you ever seen this list of dependencies before? If yes, there's an image, and let's take it. We don't need to build the image. We have saved a lot of time. OK, this is one of the tricks. And the second one is uh, that the, um, the images used by the KMOK, uh, they contain just the general code. And they don't contain the root definition itself. They don't contain the Groovy file, or the Java file, or the XML file. Those ones are mounted to the running container as a config map. And that's the second important trick to get the speed up. OK? So now, when I change this, um, when I change the root definition from, uh, well, let's say from, 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 uh, from uppercase to lowercase, I hit save. Uh, the KMO client uh, recognizes the, the change uh, in the file and instantly creates the, an update of the resource inside the cluster. And the operator looks, ah, the dependencies haven't changed. I don't need to rebuild the image or build a new one. I'll take the old one and I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, connect the config map with the uh, root definition there. So, limitations. Actually, very easy. The wrap up. These, these are three things I want you to uh, remember from this talk. KMOK is an operator based uh, Kubernetes runtime for KMO. It's for fast prototyping and rather simple routes. It's not a 100% replacement for traditional KMO. That's it. Uh, here is the project info. If you have questions, uh, I'm there in the corridor. Thank you very much. <laughs>